everyone and welcome back to another Krebs Coho replay cast. This time around we do a spammy game on Sturzdorf. So a spammy spammy game. Um, not the kind of spam that you put in your sandwiches, not the meaty kind of spam. I'm talking about the spam that is analogous to say the Lord of the Rings, the Horde. That is the kind of spam that I am talking about with this game. So I've uh, taken a wee look at this game and yes indeed you will get your spams but it is quite action packed and a lot of good stuff. One thing I do want you guys to note however is that it is kind of predictable how it's going to turn out but just for the sake of this replay I really want you guys to enjoy it. It's a very cool one and like I keep on saying it, just enjoy what it is. So we got two players on this 1v1 map, map Maiden, two versing his opponent, um, Fantastic Ganzi. So it's going to be a Wehrmacht versus British um, match. And what I'm actually going to do towards the beginning and the middle of the game is actually focus on the Wehrmacht player because I actually want to take a look at some of the stuff that he does, the sort of build orders, the sort of uh, resource spending that he does and comment on it because it's kind of interesting what he does. So let's take a look at what's going to happen at hand. We've got the Wehrmacht quarters coming out straight away. Um, with the MG42 coming out straight away more importantly and that is going to be kind of good going to be suppressing those infantry sections right away and oh my god this pioneer squad already losing one man and almost its entire squad very lucky to be getting out of there kind of an iffy choice for the um, recon infantry squad to uh, use the sniping ability on a pioneer squad. It is kind of good considering that the pioneer has to retreat immediately and then he's not capping. That means that only half of the force is capping. Um, but say, I'll actually bring it up a little bit later on in this replay and then it'll be, make a little bit more sense. I think it's just a way to occur, or just a way to happen here. So we've got this MG42 just about to set itself up behind this branch getting that um, orange cover and this is what I mean. So the MG42 just a way to suppress this one guy and shooting right at him and this is what I mean about the iffiness. If he had that um, extra munitions rather than spending it on, on the Pioneer, he could have actually have taken out that frontal MG42 guy right there and actually flanked him, got around him, and then possibly even taken it out. Could you imagine what it'd be like for the infantry from the Brits to have an MG42 in their possession so early? Man, it'd just be crazy. They'd be um, at a very good advantage. Uh, so it's kind of unfortunate that he was not able to do that, but this MG42, this is one badass MG42, he's just going to stay there and take the bullets, uh, but obviously going to realize this the hard way and having to retreat out of there. Not really the most effective MG42, usually you got to be a bit more careful about them, keep them behind some sort of infantry, have some sort of support. So what do we have? We have another Volksgrandier coming out, switching over, over to the Krieg Barracks or the Vermont Quarters. Um, they have a Volksgrandier squad coming out of there as well, so a second one, and nothing weird about that whatsoever. However, we are approaching 31 uh, fuel, and so we're going to have to start thinking about T2 relatively soon. Usually the general rule is, of course, with the Vermont, as soon as you reach your uh, fuel, um, required for the uh, Krieg Barracks, then you go on ahead and go for that Krieg Barracks. Um, it's just basically the same thing for any other faction really, so that's a general rule. Set in stone, go by it. Uh, let's see what the uh, Wehrmacht or the British player is doing. Switching on over to Maiden 2, he has the Lieutenant out with two infantry sections and he's got the headquarters placed down on the medium munitions point over here, so plus 18. Obviously a very, very um, common thing for British play players to be doing. So really nothing that strange about this match right now. So you're thinking, okay Bernard, where's the spam? Come on, I'm really starting to get on my edges right now, where's the spam? And I'm just going to get tell you to take a chill pill and just relax one second because the um, insanity is about to ensue in the next few minutes or so. So we've got two Volksgrandier squads and this is the funny thing, a lot of people like to complain about spams from uh, factions and what we usually see um, 
is that people usually like to say team up against the Wehrmacht or the Americans and call them spammers. And you know, I suppose rightly so, the riflemen and the airborne are quite spammable um, sort of infantry, but so are the Volksgrenadiers. Um, Usually we don't see that much spams from other uh, factions anymore in 2.602, however I suppose you could see the uh, Panzer Grenadiers be grouped up, we could also see infantry sections grouped up, but really I haven't seen it as much as in the previous patch, not with the opposing fronts factions anyway. And that is just one of my observations, I totally understand if you guys disagree with it, but then again, you know, they are totally spammable, likewise you can, they could be spammable on any other faction. But usually what we're going to see in this matchup anyway is... Well, we're probably going to be seeing a Volksgrenadier spam. I mean, look at this. We've already got three Volksgrenadiers on the field. It doesn't look like he's going to be stopping for T2 at all. If we switch on over to Fantastic and see if he's producing anything else. Nothing from the Vermont quarters and no T2 either. He has a, quite a bit of fuel saved up, so that means he probably hasn't even invested in T2 yet. Which is sort of a funny thing, considering that the uh, Brits have so much points on the field. Uh, quickly switching on over to them again, seeing their income plus 16, they are producing the field support half track, uh, truck, should I say headquarters. Um, so they are going to be able to produce some hmm, little Stuart possibly soon and you really got to start thinking T2, I might want to start going for something anti-tank, you know. Maybe uh, Blitzkrieg and Stormtroopers, but then again T2 is what usually people go for by now. Instead, Fantastic has one, two, three, four, four Volksgrenadiers, no, five Volksgrenadier squads just on the field. And this is what I mean about spam. I suppose you guys could call these uh, Volksgrenadiers the meaty type of spam. They are flesh and bones. But um, these guys, loads and loads of them on the field. Could you imagine just how um, effective this thing could be? So many Volksgrenadiers and so few a uh, few infantry sections on the field right now. Kind of a funny thing. Say if you had a medic bunker down and then you're just consistently uh, provoking your your uh, opponent with the Volks Grenadiers, you could get loads and loads of Grenadiers from that medic bunker. Um, obviously something to note, if you're going to be going for a spammy sort of uh, strategy then you might as well have that medic station, that medic bunker, casualty clearing center down so you get those extra guys going about. Um, always very, very recommended. Also, likewise, if you're going to be going for a heavy infantry strategy, go for your veterancy for the um, infantry. That's what you want to get. That's what you want to capitalize on. So we have Volksgrenadiers with assault grenades. That means the Blitzkrieg has been selected by them. And here we go. Ten munitions left for the Wehrmacht. The, Vo the there we go. Stun grenades. About to go down. I absolutely love what the Brit player was doing. He was separating his guys so that the stun grenades were not going to take out or stun all of the guys if they were clumped up together. Look at this mass amount of carnage! This is such a. Oh my god, can you imagine if you're in the Brit's position right now how tough this would look? Just imagine all the flamethrowers, the MG42, the Volksgrenadiers. So many of them are going to be great against taking this uh, mortar placement out. And look at this, taken out. It's in neutral hands, and now it is in the Vermont hands can be used against the Brits look at this they're just they got their sides this is sort of like a civil war sort of thing let's take shots at each other um, this Volksgrenadier squad just managing to get out of there luckily very very lucky um, but this mortar placement is just shooting away and oh my god I can't believe the Wehrmacht are using the Brits weapons against them how smart is that eh the, the flamethrowers inside the building are just wearing away at this headquarters command truck. This is what I mean about spam. This is why it's so scary. Can you just imagine all of these guys? And this is the iffy thing. Um, I totally understand about the um, stun grenades uh, being used, the assault grenades from the uh, Volksgrenadiers. However, you know, that's 50 ammunition. That is a lot. To be honest, in my personal opinion, I think I actually would have upgraded one of my squads with an MP40 just so I could close in on these squads and just take them out. I know there's loads and loads of these cars and they're very, very effective. But then again, I mean, I think the MP40s would be a much better investment to close in on these guys and just finish them off once and for all. I could totally understand stunning them, but maybe not the best of things. Um, to do to be honest and it's, that's why he's uh, suffering a little bit that's why he's not being able to finish off these squads 
and instead the infantry are taking out his own guys. So if he had those MP40s, my god, he could absolutely have wrecked the Brits by now. Instead, what he's doing is he's losing his MG42, he's losing a few of his Volksgrandeers. The Volksgrandeers are most likely going to recap this MG42 over here, and it looks like they're getting in position to do so, and yes, they are recapping it. So very good, but yeah, again, another... Um, assault grenades being used. Is this the correct thing? What do you guys think? Um, you know, that's a load of ammunition there to be using on assault grenades, considering that they're not even being used that well. Uh, he did manage to take out an infantry section here, however, the casualty clearing centers managed to produce another one, so the last thing that the Vermont needs at the moment. How are the Brits going to counter this? They are countering it with- oh my god! Was that a grenade from the uh, commandos? It must have been the- Oh my god, the Brits are com uh, are going to be combating this with the Royal Commandos. That is such a brilliant uh, doctrinal choice. All this uh, combat over here must have produced so much CP for the Brits. And what they have done was call down that uh, glider there right behind the enemy lines of the Vermok. This sort of uh, makeshift enemy lines here. And those Commandos just obliterating a huge amount of... Oh my god, no, 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 no! Oh my god! Oh no! That is painful! That is painful to see. I'm sorry guys, that is just absolutely horrible. Just to see the amount of casualties. Um just when we're gonna let's let's consider this was the end of the game and we're talking about a post recap of what's happening here. Um Definitely the Brits were doing very well holding out, just consistently uh, running around, chasing down the MG. Uh, very good job to the Brits. However, the Wehrmacht, they could have ended it um, almost instantly. If they, rather than going for those assault grenades, they had three MP40s, considering that they used three assault grenades uh, lo lobs, they could have easily have gotten those three MP40s, and oh my god, that would have been so much more effective at clearing out these guys uh the mp40 is obviously very good at close range and they shoot much faster than the car 98 um so definitely he could have ended that game right there and then took out every single infantry squad there and he could have finished off the rest of the brits however instead he's opted out for those assault grenades and well i suppose he has to live the consequences use assault grenades when there's going to be a huge mass of guys uh grouped together what he was using them was on um individual squads not very wise so I like what he is doing now. I like what Fantastic's doing. He's responding to this whole entire thing by going for a stew. He obviously realizes that a glider was put down, so the Brits are very heavy on their infantry at the moment. They have a field support truck which is put down on another f uh, fuel s or uh, munitions um, section. Very interesting choice. Perhaps they're doing that because they have commandos out and the commandos need to uh, lob grenades. Obviously, munitions dependent. Also, maybe they want to uh, get some. Uh, weapons on their infantry sections. Maybe they want to get uh, piets. Who knows, really? So maybe that's why he's yeah, gone for his uh, munitions ran th rather than the fuel. So what else? What else? What else? What else? The stew is right here. He's combating the headquarters, doing a little tiny bit of damage. Really, not that much though. Funny thing is, the Brits. Let's see what the Brits are doing. Actually, switching it all over to them. Is here we go. This is what I'm talking about. The glider with Tetrarch. And this is what he's just about to call down. And where is it? Um, I'd like to see this glider come down. There it is. He's putting it actually at the very back of his base. Just so it doesn't get destroyed. And he can actually produce that Tetrarch again. Obviously it's more expensive to call down a Tetrarch. Um, and a whole new glider. Rather than uh, produce another one from the glider itself. So these Tetrarchs. Now this is a sort of funny thing. I'll, I'll let you guys see what's about to happen. Um, the Volksgrandeers are going up along the side. Maybe trying to decap some of the positions over here. Just trying to harass the Brit. Some fighting going along here. But loads and loads of Volksgrandeers. And here we go. The Tetrarch is getting in on the action. Not doing much damage. However, it's upgrading itself with its better gun. And this is going to be doing a much better job. Look at that. Instantly... Um, from the upgrade doing a lot better. These Tetrarchs are so speedy, they're so mobile. Stu has absolutely no chance whatsoever. Considering that it has to lob its shot, it's not a direct sort of impact shot like the uh, like the Stug. It has to lob it in the air, and that gives these Tetrarch plenty of time to actually dodge it. But the Tetrarch does a lot of damage, as you guys can see, against the Stu. It done about, what was that, maybe a fifth of its health, or something like that? 
And that's a very, very good. And that was a frontal armor shot. There you go. Piercing the front armor. Again, another fifth of its health. Just keep on doing this. The Tetrarch is obviously a very speedy tank. Reloads quite quickly. And the, the Stu really is going to have a difficult time of even combating this. Especially when he has to rotate his entire body. Uh, the casualty clearing center is gone. The mortar pit is gone. The headquarters command truck is just barely... Uh, staying in there. The Tetrarch is obviously being a bit cautious now because there's Volksgrandeers over here. It might be likely that T2 is down. And yes, the T2 is down by uh, the Wehrmacht. So that means that uh, Panzerfaust are unlocked and the speedier capping is unlocked for the Volksgrandeers. Very, very good. However, switching on over to the Wehrmacht yet again, they have four, only 47 munitions. That is only enough for one Panzerfaust and that could um, potentially... Yeah, I believe it could take out the rest of the Tetrarch there. So the Tetrarch definitely needs to be careful because the Panzerfaust could easily take out the rest of that health and lose it. Um, so the Brits really need to be careful. As soon as they lose that Tetrarch, then they have nothing to combat the actual Stu, and that leaves a Stu to be able to free roam about and continue harassing the Brits. So points-wise, 500 for the Wehrmacht. They have been absolutely unfazed in terms of points. 309 for the Brits. So the Wehrmacht has done a very good job in the beginning of the game. Um, to uh, just about mid-game in terms of holding the point. If we saw that confrontation that was happening, just this massive attack that we had, the spammy sort of attack, it was pretty much half-half down the line in terms of points, uh, strategic points. The Wehrmacht had a majority of them on the map. Very good job for them, however, they are losing a lot of their points now. The very good thing about T2, as I said, was that the Wehrmacht uh, Volksgrenadiers can cap away at 1.25 speed instead of the initial one speed. So obviously they're going to be a lot better at capping now, so very versatile, very good. This Stu is just about to be taken down. This does not look good. The Tetrarch is at full health. A Panzerfaust can't even take this thing down. And Panzerfaust is just about to come down and... What? Okay, it looked like the Panzerfaust was actually being dropped there before it was actually being shot. That was a sort of funny looking thing, um, but instead two Panzerfaust being shot onto the Tetrarch and only taking it down to a third health left. Possibly another Panzerfaust would be able to take it out, but that's three in total. That is a lot of munitions. That's 105 in total, which is not even worth it to take out a Tetrarch. Um, the only thing I can really commentate on at the moment, and the stew is out by the way, uh, the only thing I can really commentate for the Wehrmacht, they are obviously spamming. And I appreciate that a lot of people will not like spams, however it is a totally valid strategy, it's part of the game, get used to it basically. <laughs> um, you just have to learn how to combat it. Um, the only thing I can comment with the Wehrmacht is that they're not being so wise on their munition spending. They have loads of fuel at the moment, they're not being wise on their munitions. So using all those assault grenades, using the Panzerfaust, it's it's funny, obviously obviously the Tetrarchs are um, going to be quite... <laughs> They're going to be easily be taken out by the Panzerfaust. However, you need to think about the anti-tank in the long term. Do you want to do you want to use Panzerfaust just to temporarily chase them away, or do you want to get an actual longer-term uh, anti-tank, such as a, a pack gun or or a Panzer uh, Panzerschreck? So, I mean, he has a Blitzkrieg Doctrine, he can easily, easily, easily get a Stormtrooper squad, and that could do perfectly fine with the Panzerschrecks to combat the Tetrarchs. Um, but instead he's opted for the pack, and that is totally fine, at least he has some sort of proper anti-tank on the field now. Um, so that's good, I suppose. There's a load of guys here, the Commandos, and oh my god, this is just too much. I believe these Volks are going to probably go down, and yes, they're actually obliterated there. The Volks are going to be going over to this side, because if they have to retreat, at least they're going through this retreat path, and rather than through there. And this is one of the really annoying things. It's too bad you can't really uh, choose your retreat paths, because sometimes the retreat paths go through places you don't want them to go to. So, as you guys saw, the Volksfrenzy squad right in the midst of those infantry and just being annihilated. So it's not it's kind of unfortunate you can't initially say, okay, retreat, but go this direction. Say if you could like shift click it. It's kind of unfortunate you can't do that. Um, but anyway, you know, that's part of the game. A lot of people like to actually combat the opponents by having stuff ready on the retreat paths, such as mines, such as having guys ready on the retreat paths, just to chase down any of those retreating squads. So we have a, another Tetrarch and two Tetrarchs in total. We've also got a Sapper squad with the wrench, so they are obviously going to be capable to do, 
capable of doing advanced repair. Um, very useful for the Tetrox and very useful for any emplacements that might come down in the future. Uh, what does the Wehrmacht have? Just loads and loads of uh, Vogue squads. So that is four in total. They lost one just a bit ago. They also got a Kampfkraft center down. And that's why we see the module here, the sort of uh, this thingamajig <laughs> right there, the computers, I suppose. Is that a computers? Possibly. And that's why we see Veteran 2 1 on the Volksgrand the Deers. So the Volksgrand Deers with Veteran 2 1. Obviously, the Veteran 2 would have helped a lot earlier, considering that he had so much so much fuel floating about, then, you know, he could have got the Veteran C out earlier, and that would have helped quite a bit. Obviously, the Vos Grenadiers cannot get elite armor, however, you know, the Veteran C always helps, especially, say, when you get to Veteran C 3 and you have that extra 20% health on each squad. Very useful. Another thing uh, that I want to mention about the munition spending is the Medic Bunker. He should have definitely had the Medic Bunker out by that first engagement. So, say, if rather than instead of those three uh, assault gr uh, grenade lobs, he for a medic bunker and two mp40s all costing 50 munitions that would have been so much more useful and he would, pro would probably got multiple uh grenadier squads out of that possibly even one or two so that would have been really useful so it's good that he's getting the medic bunker now but it's kind of a bit late that's what i don't like about his munition spending yeah looking at the points 500 still for the vermont and 286 for the brits the Wehrmacht are obviously trying to be defensive and keep these points intact in his favor. The Tetrarchs are, however, encompassing on multiple flanks. Gonna be a sort of scary thing for the Stu. The Stu is not a proper anti-tank. The only thing that the Wehrmacht really have in terms of anti-tank is just this pack. And just looking at the strategic points on the map, Look at that, it's just, they're absolutely encompassed. The Wehrmacht are just being pushed back on all sides, all their points are being captured, and just constantly being harassed. It's not looking good for them whatsoever. We have a field HQ, a Ford HQ coming down here, along with some mines, obviously to combat any uh, guys coming through this area, any Tetrox possibly. And sort of a funny choice, I was thinking maybe go for a a uh, mortar half track or not a mortar half track sorry just a normal infantry half track um, but then again that's sort of an iffy thing maybe the forward HQ would be the best considering that there's Tetrax on the field they could easily ca counter the uh, half tracks and chase them down so always a sort of iffy thing but anyway so more combat on the field multiple squads while this uh, recon section is actually <laughs> utilizing the time to actually cap away the victory point here and we saw I believe a grenade landing over here and taking out a bunch of those grenadiers the VPs are half half one in the Brits uh, possession and one in the Wehrmacht's possession so just absolutely being harassed now Wehrmacht having a very difficult time let's see what the Brits are doing the Brits are still have about the same stuff. Oh no, they just managed to get down their artilleries selected. They've also got demolition charges placed down from their uh, commandos. So very, very good. Love that sort of stuff. And what is this? Could this be a real artillery strike or could it be a fake? No, it looks like the real one is coming down on the medic bunker. And very good choice as well. As soon as you see a medic bunker, take, the, uh, take it out as soon as possible. So I want to see what the Brits have. They have, oh my god, that's just too much to even look at. So let's take a look. So he's got a headquarters command truck. He's got a armored command truck over here on the munitions point again. Um, <laughs> I think it'd be better on a fuel point maybe, <laughs> but that's just my opinion. Then again, there's loads of uh, uh, fuel at the moment, the fuel income. But you know, maybe he's just trying to save up the munitions or get as much munitions as possible so he can spam artillery barrages. I don't doubt it. Maybe it's a good decision by him. Also got this 25 pounder coming down. A very, 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 very good choice by the Brits. Gonna just be harassing them. So not only will you have the 25 pounder artillery barrage um, ability from Doctrine, uh, to harass the Vermox, but you also have that 25 pounder howitzer to harass as well So you can easily take out this Ford HQ You could easily take out the medic bunker as well And so the Brits are, are the Vermox are having a very hard time of what should I do next? They're pretty much stuck in This st uh, spammy phase that they had this is the negative thing about having spams basically. It's difficult to even um, tech up 
properly because if you have so many Volksgrenadiers and you locked yourself into a T1 basically and you have a stew, um, well where are you going to get your advanced guys from? And this is why I say that you should have a medic bunker out even earlier because then you'd have at least Grenadiers out. Grenadiers obviously stronger in pretty much every way over compared, compared to um, Volksgrenadiers and obviously the Grenadiers can get Panzerschrecks which would counter the Tetrarchs and so everything makes a lot more sense then. If you had those Grenadiers out earlier you could counter the Tetrarchs much much better then you could start wearing away that the Brit one by one uh, progressively. So what the heck was that? That looked like the Tetrarch landed on the mine over there, the stew also damaging it a, it a bit and that Tetrarch is taken out. That stew was really really lucky because that Tetrarch was just on its heels just uh, ready to get on in there and take that uh, stew out the rest of its health anyway and this Tetrarch is getting repaired. Uh, so what else is on the field? We have that uh, armor command truck by the way and a stag hound coming out so very interesting choice by him by Maiden so he's obviously not going to be able to get his um, command command tank um, instead he's going to be going for his TOV unit his stag hound and a very interesting choice these stag hounds are murderers of infantry as we will see probably shortly let's see come on let's see the damage and the casualties unfold well, I mean, they're meant to be really good against infantry. There we go. Do you see that? Look at all the damage that's coming down on top of those uh, Volksgrenadiers. That um, that machine gun on top of the turret is just so good at uh, damaging these guys. Just one. That's one stack count, by the way, against a few Volksgrenadier squads. He's doing a very, very good job there. Uh, what is this? We've got more howitzer shots coming down. We've got more artillery barrages. It's just going to be too much for the Vermont. Just about to lose there. Uh, position over here and just about to lose this bunker as well and there we go the Wehrmacht are really losing everything that they had uh, remaining and Pack taking some last few shots to touch on the Tetrarch and really looks like this is just going to be a battle till the end the Tetrarch going down so a glimpse of hope for Fantastic perhaps he can maybe I don't know just hang in there for a little bit longer but it's looking really iffy Let's look at this from a sort of pan, um, panoramic sort of view, just across the battlefield. Let's look at all the, that the Brits have. You can see all the squads back here. Look at that. You can see all of them highlighted. And you can see that a Sherman Firefly is on the field. So how the heck are the Wehrmacht going to combat this? All they have is a pack, which can easily be um, taken down by an artillery barrage or by the howitzer. So very, 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 very iffy. Um, let's see what's going on over here. Can't even select those guys. It's just because they're probably Vermocked, and I have not. I don't. I'm not. I'm not actually looking at them at the moment. So let's see. Here we go. That looks better. Um, let's see what they have. They have a variety of guys over here, and so there's some battles going out in the far distance. Can you guys see that? Uh, so taking a closer look at what's going on over there, and loads and loads of these guys using their smoke screen to. Um, perhaps avoid some of those MP40s. They're going to be putting it down a demolition charge over here and just tr completely denying Fantastic from even getting anywhere. And this is what I mean demolition charge, just a way to um, easily explode on top of any squads that like to get in that vicinity of that uh, place. The Tiger rolling out on the field. This looks a little bit better for the Wehrmacht. At least they have some sort of heavy, sort of proper tank now that can actually combat both uh, tanks and infantry. So very, very good that they have that. Obviously going to be making his presence known. However, I'd like to see this Tiger be supported some way. Obviously the Tiger alone is not going to be able to combat absolutely everything on the field. Um, it'll do a de decent job, but you know. It definitely needs some help. So the demolition charge taking quite a bit of a chunk out of that tiger. The stag hound getting on in there to take a little bit of damage on the tiger. The tiger already almost at half health. That's not good, guys. Not good whatsoever. There's veterancy one on him as well. So the stew shooting away at the st stag and a pack just supporting from behind. Love that sort of stuff. However, the Wehrmacht, I'm just telling you, it's just it's just going to be too much for them. They locked themselves in T1 for far too long. 
that they don't even have any proper units out on the field anymore. And as I was stressing earlier, Medic Bunker with the Grenadiers would have helped a lot. Imagine having those Grenadiers out now with the Panzer Shreks. They could easily just get on in there and help take out these Sherman Fireflies. Two Sherman Fireflies is just going to be far, far too much to even deal with. And the Brits are just got such a great upper hand. They got such a such an awesome force to deal with. And they have pretty much everything. This is a funny thing about the Brits. It's just that a lot of people think that the Brits are... Um, they have the sort of the same build order. And in some respects, I do agree with that. In the beginning, a lot of people would just go for their initial uh, lieutenant, their two infantry squads, then they go for a mortar pit, and then they move on to field support. And you know, I actually agree with that, but usually later in the game, they, de they deviate slightly depending on their doctrinal choice. They get some different units, and then they can go for emplacements, and then they can go for a stag hound, then they can go for different units, sort of stuff like that. So they do deviate slightly, um, probably not as much as the other factions, but you know, that's the Brits for you, right? everyone's uh, a little bit different the um, Brits however are sort of the bread and butter whatever strategy they go for they're pretty much just the same strategies and they do pretty much the same effectiveness so the Tiger very badly damaged needing repairs what is left for the Wehrmacht they've got four squads one is being suppressed apparently yes being suppressed by an MG 42 I believe and yes that is if you take a closer look at that that is a Wehrmacht MG 42 in the hands of that the MG 42 is actually a very terrifying gun I've looked up a few videos about it. I recommend you guys to check it out as well if you just look up the MG 42 on YouTube and just listen to the gun and you can just find out why it's so notorious just how scary it is I mean imagine if you were under fire from such a thing and you just had this rapid fire just it's not even just the fact that it's rapid fire, it's just how it sounds. It's just so intimidating, it's so very scary. Um, check it out guys, uh, and then you'll probably understand why so many people feared the MG42. So, just the probably last few encounters is 252 points for the Brits and 428 for the Wehrmacht. The, all the VPs are in the hands of the Brits. And really not looking good, so many tanks on the field, three Sherman Fireflies, oh my god. The Tiger is going to have no chance. He can maybe take out one uh, Sherman Firefly at best, but you know, three is just going to be way too much. Sherman Fireflies are obviously the anti tanks, anti tank tanks, and so they do a very, very good job at taking out the Tiger, and you know, Tiger, no chance. Okay, so just the last few encounters here, and that is the playback over. So, I pretty much covered what the Wehrmacht could do differently. The Brits, however, in the beginning, hmm, this is sort of an iffy thing. Um, it's kind of an, actually, it's really iffy. I mean, could the uh, British player actually have done anything differently there? Um, I'm actually struggling to think of anything. I mean, you know, you can have Vickers, but then again, he wasn't really expecting such a spammy thing to be heading towards his base so fast. I think that what the Brit was doing uh, was probably just the correct thing. He had the casualty clear, he said he had the mortar pit, he had multiple squads, and he was just trying to defend. He also got the uh, commandos out, and I think that's very good for him. However, you guys saw that it could easily have changed differently if the Vermont done some different stuff. This game could easily have finished at uh, 10 minutes and under. But anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed the replay, and I will be carrying on to more replays in time. So anyway, till next time, guys, I hope you all have a very nice day, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.